Bonjour, true footy babies. I've <laughs> done that intro before, and it just came to me in the moment. How are you, Daniel Busher? Pretty good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Trade period has just come and gone. Yeah, was, was, not as many trades and drama as I was expecting. To be honest, there was a yeah. lot. Obviously, like the drama that did happen this year, though, was a lot more intense than probably last year's drama. It's just probably the quantity I'd probably lean towards last year a bit. Yeah, I was going to say, how would you describe this trade period in one word? Betrayal. Betrayal. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a fair bit to that. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Fair call. But yeah. um, before we get into the trade period pod as well. Oh, by the way, that's three years of true footy. Yeah, bloody oath. Yeah, because that was yeah. uh, three years ago that we started our very first podcast was yeah. looking at the 2018 yeah. trade period and it's 2020 now. Maybe so. buddy sitting by the thing, mom yeah. shaking, camera bloody gone. Yeah, that was the day before we, we had yeah. tripods. You were literally yeah. just holding the camera for that long well that was <laughs> extremely unnecessary we could, we could have got you on shot we could yeah. have had just something in the way yeah i would have had a mic on me i was just chiming in from behind the bloody mic every now and again it was yeah a laugh. that's true that's right just out of context yeah <laughs> um yeah that's nah, so three years of true footy pretty unreal even though it's a little bit delayed this year because of covid and stuff yeah. like that trade periods a bit later so it's three years in one month but yeah. uh yeah I guess, I guess we can save a little bit more of the reflective stuff to another podcast where we don't have so much to talk about because yeah. trade period is off season one or a t- crack 10k sort of one yeah well we're going to do a new year's eve podcast as well even yeah. if it's that late just i'd like to make that a tradition i yeah. really, really enjoy that but um, we have do, we actually recorded any of them on New Year's Eve or they just sort of re-release them New Year's Eve and usually do them a bit before? Uh, right? I think the latter. Yeah. yeah. Didn't we... It wasn't the first time we did a New Year's Eve podcast. I'm pretty sure we released it in February. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something crazy like that. Back before we were organised. Yeah. yeah. yeah but buddy, yeah. we have a very important message from our sponsors, Bush. Manscaped. Manscaped.com who are sticking with us for a little bit longer and they have this to say, jingle balls to the walls, fellas, and listen up. Because untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. You know what else is a thing of the past? Not buying people Christmas presents. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that is seamless. But that's very true. Christmas is coming up. It's yep. also my birthday next week. Just to throw that in there, which has absolutely yep. nothing to do You would like a second Lawnmower 3.0 purchased? Well, I would. No, but seriously, with Christmas coming up, it's a great opportunity to get either yourself or someone you love, a man. <laughs> um, <laughs> didn't mean it like that um it is a perfect time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season and i'm specifically talking about manscapes new product the perfect package 3.0 which includes the lawnmower 3.0 it does include the 3.0 so the perfect package is actually like yeah a selection of products and the lawnmower 3.0 is the crown that's like the wipes and all that sort of stuff too exactly right so have you ever had a time where you know you've nipped yourself shaving or anything like that bush it doesn't i don't necessarily mean your balls I'll say, yeah, cop me face a few times over the years, to say the least. Yeah, well, the good thing about this product is that it's got a skin-safe ceramic blade, so you will never, ever have that problem down south. Um, and on top of that, it's weather... It's well, I was going to say weather-resistant, but it's waterproof <laughs> is what I should have said. Weather-resistant, you can certainly use yeah, it outside it in the, in the rain. rain. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't use this product outside in the rain. Um, but it's also got a 90 minute battery runtime as well. So this is elite technology. You shouldn't use the same razor you do on your face as you do on your balls, because that's just nasty. Probably not the smartest move, no. No, but thankfully the Manscaped Perfect Package also includes the Crop Preserver, and that's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer, which I think you actually need. I, I use the, I actually use those products, like because they sent us the package, and I've really like actually enjoyed some of that stuff. Yeah. It's like adds a nice little thing. The well, wipes, I've run out of the wipes already. It's made a difference to everyone else yeah. in the room too. Hopefully they've sent through more wipes. Yeah. I did enjoy it. I've ran out. Yeah, well, you do use it in such excessive quantities. You already <laughs> put deodorant in your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? And yes, your balls stink. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the audience generally. Speaking of sweaty and stinky balls, I am thankful for their Crop Reviver. This product, along with a Crop Preserver, keeps your balls from sweating, smelling, and sticking, which is something us boys do encounter. It is summer coming up as well, so keep yourself chafe-free. Especially if we start doing some more physical off and content, like if we had a goal-kicking challenge, something like that, we definitely need these sort of products when our balls are... In a twist. Very true, very true. Speaking of keeping your balls in a twist, you will actually get a pair of Manscaped boxes as part of this package as well, which we both have. Do you wear yep. them much? Yep, I've sampled mine a few times. They give Lovely. good support for the, the ram nuts. It is the season to Manscaped, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, and friends the best gift of all, the Manscaped pa- Perfect Package 
3.0. And the exciting thing about all this Busher is that if you use our code through TrueFooty, you get 20% off their products and free shipping. So use the code TrueFooty20, which you can find in the description of this video, and I'll pin a comment as well. Your balls will thank you. They most certainly will. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. All right, let's get into the pod. Enough silliness. Uh, we're talking about, obviously, the trade period. What we'll do, the format with this, as we've done in the past, is... Um, We'll go through each team. Uh, Give them a bit of lip service. Yeah, so to speak. And A to W, we'll start with the Crows and we'll move down to the Bulldogs. I thought at first we'd talk about each club evenly, but frankly, it's some clubs just didn't do too much. So yeah. we're just going to speak as much as we think is relevant. So we will start at the Adelaide Crows, um, yep. who obviously finished last. They had Rory Atkins, Brad Crouch, and Carl Hardigan lead the club and didn't add any players, but they do hold picks 1, 9, 22, 23, 40, and then a host of picks after that they might even, not even use. I think they, they shared a couple of experienced players that weren't overly important, other than Brad Crouch, who I think we'd agree is a pretty important yeah, player. Yeah, certainly. He was their best and fairest, wasn't he? Uh, or was that was last? It this, was this, this or last year? It was yeah. one of the last two years he was their best and fairest, I believe. Yeah, he's so. certainly one of their best players, probably their best midfielder off the top of my head, other than yeah. maybe Sloan when he's like fully yeah, peak Sloan-y. in form. Um, but obviously, the, for them, the focus is bringing in youth. Do you think, because what happened with Brad Crouch was obviously he was a free agent and then uh, they were deciding whether or not to match the bid, which yeah. they wanted band one compensation naturally, which would have been pick two. Yep. And all that came through was band two compensation. Band three. It was band was three. Was it band actually. three? Yeah. Because if it was band two, it would have been the end of the first round, not a second rounder. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. Wow. There's a slight, slight difference between the band two and band three, the way they were yes. positioned. But that makes sense. Yeah, I, didn't I believe it was band that. three rather than band two. Wow. Okay. So there you go. So... Fair enough. Which makes it more dubious, I think. Yeah, it does. Uh, I don't know exactly what he was offered by the Saints, but I can't imagine yeah. it was peanuts. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure. I'm sure this yeah. inferior five six hundreds the sort of what people are floating, but mm. that's always speculative. Yeah, but bottom line, pick twenty three. Um, do you think that's under value for Brad Crouch? Certainly unders, I'd say for Brad. But at mm. the same time, St Kilda weren't going to f- trade their first rounder. They'd made that abundantly clear. So. Yeah. If Adelaide matched, it was just going to be a shit show and they were probably going to be stuck with him long term, which is not what they wanted, which is why they ended up in this situation because they didn't want to give him the security of five years. Yeah, it was it was an interesting battle between those two clubs. Were, it was unclear who was bluffing. I guess evidently Adelaide was bluffing. St Kilda could have been bluffing too because they were said if they matched the deal, they would not even going to... They would yeah. leave Brad Crouch at Adelaide. And I know that Adelaide came out and said that Brad Crouch was open to playing in Adelaide, but it became you know very evident that as soon as that bid was, uh, or whether when they decided to actually decide to match the bid, they didn't go through with it, which makes yeah. me think they just wanted to do the right thing by Brad, which again leads to this whole question of contract and players having too much power. Mm-hmm. Um, but that will be a theme of this podcast, I'm sure. We'll, we'll yeah. get into that a little bit later. I do think the value of Brad Crouch, like on an open market, a pick between 10 and 15 maybe higher if he hadn't just got busted with yeah. what was a cocaine possession yeah. or something like that bit of Charlton Heston yeah but overall um, overall even though that was a slight loss the focus for Adelaide this off season will be to get the kids in they're still in a very good position to do that so picks 1 9 well, I say pick 1 they're probably yeah. it's going to be pick 2 in reality be interesting to see what they yeah. do with them um, and I, I could actually see them also trading back into next year's draft with all yeah. their picks where they got like eight picks on my screen there and five in the top 40 so I could see them down like or like yeah. um, scanning one back to 2021 yeah because a few teams went out of this year into 2021 heavy so they might try and yeah. come back in on draft night if there's someone they like yeah. available or whatever they will I uh, most likely asset sort of thing yeah that makes sense um, is there anything really else to add on Adelaide I guess Hately oh of course yes the Hately I situation, completely like, forgot about that well because they're number one pick in the preseason draft so that should certainly yeah. he should certainly get through the door I'd say but True. It was interesting. GWS was stubborn enough to not even get some sort of nominal value for him, like a late... Yeah. I think the explanation for that would be GWS actually have a host of picks in this draft already, so even a third rounder is probably not a, dr- a pick they're going to use. Yeah. Maybe a future. They should, could have copped a future they third have, a yeah. future fourth yeah, yeah, or true. something like that. Yeah, you think... It's better than nothing, like... It's almost as though they did Adelaide a favour there. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, from an Adelaide perspective... You look at that and you think suddenly, okay, yes, they had slight unders on Brad Crouch, but you have a guy for free. Jackson Hately was a first rounder two yeah. years ago. They're looking to add youth, particularly to their midfielder. He's South Australian. It yeah. kind of brings it back to equilibrium. I think it's a fairly reasonable off season 
yeah. from Adelaide, and obviously the draft day will be their more important day. And so. obviously they're at a point with their list where they're going to probably play talent for another couple of years before they're sort of back on that good trajectory. They pro- might have a similar patch like Brizzy a few years ago where they bled guys like Yo, Red, and yeah. Doherty, yeah. all those sort of dudes. It will be interesting to see what Matt Crouch does as well. Certainly. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. All right, let's talk about the Brisbane Lions, who obviously lost a prelim this year. Uh, Stefan Martin and Alex Witherden left the club, and they recruited Joe Danaher and Nakaya Cocker too, which is interesting. Their draft picks currently stand at 25, 53, and 58. So it looks like there was a focus on next year's uh, draft over this one. Again, yeah. one of those clubs we alluded to. Uh, and I think they traded a first round. Oh, they, they added Melbourne's first round pick next year in exchange for their early picks this year. So Yeah, because yeah, Melbourne of. did their standard trade back into the draft shtick. But yeah. We'll probably touch on that a bit later. Yeah. So they've landed a Joe Danaher player that's obviously... Um, he was a father-son at Essendon mm-hmm. and, you know, like a favourite son of the club, so to speak, even though he wanted out. Um, Victorian, no real links to Queensland. Uh, it's a far cry from what they used to be, like you alluded to just then, when yeah. Brisbane used to bleed players, isn't it? Yeah. I also think with Danaher, it's a unique sort of situation where he sort of like doesn't like being under that football microscope of Melbourne. Like you even see it yeah. in Perth, where like Hogan wanted to leave for Greater Western Sydney. Like just like the media here, will like take every angle, like scrupulise these players. Like whereas in the rugby league states, they're not going to be getting that sort of attention. Yes. Like day to day, they'll still sort of get it on a national level, but in their day to day lives, they won't be having local articles about them every sort of day. Yeah, about their performance, about their well being, about everything. With that in mind, what to what extent do you think Brisbane are a destination club now? Because that is a term that gets thrown around a lot now. I think they've set themselves up real nice, like because obviously they've got the good weather and everything up there. It's a nice place to live, Brisbane by all accounts. Like yeah. So if you're in a position where you're flexible enough to move away from Victoria, if you're born in Victoria or whatever, there's yep. certainly opportunity for you to go up there. I think they've certainly turned it around as far as being an attractive place to play, when obviously it used to be the complete opposite. I, I do think that the term destination club should be reserved for teams that like the true top of the league in terms of their brand. So, mm. for, Okay, so to contrast it, in, like the, in the Premier League, a destination club would be like Man United, even yeah. though they're not the best team. Yeah, they're, they've still got that cash, eh? It, people aspire to play for them. It's like the Lakers, everyone, when they were shit. Like, yeah. They were shit until, like, LeBron went there, basically, and everyone still was like, yeah, the Lakers will sign good free agents. Yeah, they'll be good. Yeah. It's one of those sort of teams, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and people th- are throwing that around in Brisbane and St Kilda because they are starting to track players now, but I'd probably reserve Destination Club for... I think Geelong's probably earned that status. Yeah. I think Hawthorne, to some extent. Richmond now, Collingwood... Yeah. Dare I say it, West Coast, obviously it helps if they're West Australian, but to some extent there's yeah. that. Um, but okay, but the, I'm not really trying to denigrate Brisbane now. I'm, what I'm actually saying is uh, it's clear that they've just had a clear turnaround. People believe yeah. in Brisbane, the vision. They believe in Fagan. They've put in a good foundation of draft picks and kids that have built that foundation yeah. of a culture that's sustainable yes. and people want to stay there and... Yeah, good bunch of people. It would be great. Like, this, like from four or compared to three years ago, uh, you'd love to get drafted to Brisbane now. Yeah, like you say, all like Barry and McCluggage and all these yeah. sort of dudes just hanging out together, having a good time, like yeah. just living together. Like the medical side of things, I think is attractive for Brisbane mm-hmm. as well. That might be a factor with Danaher as well, actually, yeah. because they've had a good injury list for the last two years. I've heard that they've got a good reputation in that yeah. respect so that could actually make sense yeah that certainly makes sense I'd, I'm not too informed in that regard but yeah that'd yeah. be definitely plausible let's move on to Carlton now who lost uh, zero players this yeah. off season and they recruited Zach Williams Adam Sard and Lockie Fogarty which oh. was uh, a little bit of a Low late key. surprise yeah. yeah no first rounder to speak of they start the draft at pick 38 um, they also, in a plus, didn't have to dip into any future picks yeah. for these guys. Zach Williams was a uh, free, free agent. agent, of course. As far as I'm concerned, they're one of the biggest winners. I had them in my top three winners from this draft, uh, sorry, this trade period, and they turned a weakness, which was probably defensive run out of the back half, especially with Kane yeah. Simpson retiring. I think they kind of turned that into a strength with you know Adam Saad and Zach Williams, who yeah. are two really good runners. To what extent, like, do you think with these changes? Carlton, a top eight, I don't want to say Monty, but like, where do, where do they, does this elevate them for you? They're sort of, yeah, certainly. Like, they're two very good players. Like, it'd be interesting to see if the rumors are sort of true how much midfield time they're actually eyeing off for, like, Zach Williams specifically. Like, Adam yeah. Sardle will obviously probably just be that full time halfback flanker for him, I believe. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be interesting sense. to see how that dynamic works. But yeah, they've got the pieces together to make a run. I think they've sort of got themselves in a position. It's just whether the pieces all. That's the question, like, because it's a yeah. lot of young question mark pieces, like how it all clicks, like. But they've definitely got the potential at this point. Like, yeah, you well, can't deny it any further. It's sort of like it's not like oh, they're young. They're still, it's sort of like yeah, they're on the rise. It's just mm. how far they rise, how well. Yeah, I think. I mean, they have so much upside in their team, so yeah. much of their youth. Even Patrick Cripps has upside because he didn't play well this year, yeah. and Carlton rose up the ladder. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll probably save the real predictions for later in the season. But I do think, in terms of improving their best twenty-two, maybe yeah. only one club has done it better than uh, Carlton, yeah. which we'll get to later. Let's yeah. talk about Collingwood. This is probably the juiciest yeah. one. Yep. I did do a little video on it recently, so go check that out. Um, but. We'll cover it. Who left? Jaden Stevenson. Yep. R2-D2? No. <laughs> I don't remember how to say his last name. Bosanar yeah. Vilagi. I'm yeah. going to say that. Most people just call him R2. So. Yeah. Uh, Tom Phillips left. Adam Trelaw, of course, left. Yep. Uh, no one came in. And their picks are 14, 16, and then not again till 65. Fair to say this is an absolute misfire. They've weakened the best 22 for little reward. How would yep. you describe their trade period in one word? As I said before, betrayal, but, betrayal, like, oh, so, true, but yeah. sort of like they've kind of just shat the bed, like financially, like whoever's in charge of their salary cap needs to be sacked. Like, yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. If you're offering people contracts and then a few years later trying to get rid of them, what kind of faith are you as a player going to have when the club offers you a contract extension in the future? Yeah. Like. If Collingwood offered me a long-term back-ended deal to try and have cap flexibility, it's like, why? You're going to shit the bed with it anyway. Like, yeah. Because that's why Adam Trelaw did back-end his deal, so they could get other guys signed, and they still mm. shat the bed. Like, Yeah. I do wonder it's if the Brody, disaster. Brody Grundy deal was larger than they anticipated. I don't mm. know. I agree. It c- comes down to mismanagement. I think it's obviously a disaster on the field because yeah. they've lost... Um, Culturally, more so, I think. Like, How yes. can the players trust... like? Buckley, like, ha- like yeah. after all the back and forth of some of the shit he's said, what he hasn't said to people, like... Well, ha- remember when he came out, he has a bit of form in this area where he came out and said they didn't really mean to recruit Chris Main, or the, yeah. he said that not everyone was on board with that. Yeah, yeah. He came out and said that while Chris Main was still on the list. Yeah, So, yeah. there's obviously a bit of history here for, for Collingwood, mm. a bit of form. Yeah. On the field, yes. Okay, so what? their best 22 is weakened, I would say. Mm. Trelaw... Um, Stevenson and Phillips may be part of their best 25, but a talent yeah. to be best 22. Culturally, like yeah. you allude to, the playing group must look at this Especially and think, Especially because they were supposedly in their premiership window, one of the top contenders going into this year. They underperformed this year, and then they do something like this. Like, yeah. If they don't turn it around next year and have a really good year, Eddie and Bucks' heads should be pretty much on the chopping block, I'd say. To yeah. Be quite truthful. I think the, the third element to it is a PR nightmare, because not only is everyone laughing at them, but... Collingwood fans are hurt. Like, yeah. I would be devastated if, um, like, yeah. the Eagles turfed Andrew Gaff. He's not necessarily yeah. my favourite player, but, you know, if, yeah. if, if they did that to one of my favourite players um, and a number of others, and also yeah. we the got... The way they did it as well, though, trying to, like, blame it on his wife going to Queensland, like... And they also got, like, very limited return for it yeah. as well. So they talked about trading back into this draft to improve their draft position because they rate the draft, but they hold two first rounders and then nothing until 65. So the yeah. draft position is not that good. They talked about um, putting number uh, their first pick next year on the table, didn't get any bites for that. So that like that sure. turned into nothing as well. It's just a real swing and a miss. Because they wanted to get rid of their pick for because they got die cost. Yeah, exactly so right. Fit, similar to the situation the Bulldogs were in this year with Jamara Eugle Hagen. Like, yeah. That first round pick's useless to them, so... Yeah, but I mean, yeah, they could have used that to trade into this draft if, the, if they were concerned with draft picks this year. They've completely bungled it. Just. Well, they've penned a letter to their members, and basically I read it, it was, the premise of it was that it was all salary cap related, which is not mm. a big surprise, but mm. it is conflicting with what other people had said previously. I think they, they played down that it was salary cap. But the question is... I, I read a thing where it was sort of saying, like, where Bucks were saying, like, the stuff where, like, to troll or the playing group doesn't want you, like, the stuff to Stevenson yeah. saying you're not outspoken all that sort of stuff. Apparently, yeah. like, they'd talked to, like... They'd gotten dirt from the club psychologist basically to, like, try and bully these guys into being resigned enough to wanting to leave the club. It's pretty dark if that's true. Yeah, like, I think I, I think it was their psychologist had left, like, a couple of months prior or something, Weeks. like... Because it was something like... Yeah. They were being dubious with that sort of shit. Yeah. My, I can't speak to that. Um, yeah. It's a, yeah. But the, in the letter, they basically... But, like, yeah, so if it's true, um, 
Well, like, I guess that kind of responds to what I was going to say, which was if it is salary cap related, why wouldn't you just be honest with the players? Yeah. Surely you can pitch it to Sir Jaden Stevens and say, hey, um, we're going to try and find a new home for you. Um, level with them and be like, our contracts are out of whack. We can't keep you. We'll trade you. Yeah. That would have been a lot less hurtful, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. <laughs> but the letter says that they've had a lot of um, quality players or a number of quality players want to play for Collingwood and they couldn't sign them um, because of salary cap reasons. Yeah. So I do... That is, I'm kind of curious as to who that was. I wonder if Jeremy Cameron... Probably not Jeremy Cameron. He was probably always going to be too yeah. long. But yeah, it, it's obviously cost them recruiting players. But a $2 million salary cap dump and then yeah. no one in, it like... How are, off, how are they the off? How are they off? The goalie will offset some of that once he's actually signed, sealed, and delivered. Though he'd probably be on his eight hundred a year or whatever. But doesn't he have a ass- sexual assault charge looming over his head? Would I best show the faith in someone like him and not Jaden Stevenson it's and typical Adam Collingwood? Trimble. Like it's a bit of a <laughs> Collingwoody. Like they've just. Well, yeah. I'd be pit- like if I was a Collingwood supporter, I'd be seriously questioning whether or not I want to support that club. Yeah, it's be- like another thought I had actually is like it kind of vindicates Arafa Lumumba a bit, like. The way he said Collingwood have like mistreated him, like you sort of see him do it to other players with like mental issues. Like Adam Trelaw's alluded to his own mental health issues. Like, is it the same administration though? Are we blaming the similar, same people? Similar, like Bucks are still there, Eddie's still there, I Ned suppose. Guy's been there a very long time as well, I believe. He's the list manager, though. Yeah, exactly. But, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's connected, but I, I, I I'm not saying they're connected. But I'm just sort of saying there's it sort of paints the fame that Collingwood mm. can be cunts to their players, like. Yeah. <laughs> It is a uh, it is a PR nightmare, that's for sure. Yeah. I, I think we both agree biggest losers of the trade period by a country mile. Yeah, yeah. I Length agree. for Flemington Strait. <laughs> yeah, we'll move on to Essendon here because we are a little strapped for time. Um, another club that probably had more out than in that was Joe Danaher, Adam Sard, Orazio yeah. Fantasia leaving, um, and they did well to recruit Jai Caldwell, Peter Wright, and Nick Hind, and they hold the three top ten picks, yeah. which I think is it's the first time they've had a substantial draft hand in a very long time. Yeah. Um, Obviously, overall, in terms of their best 22, you'd say it's a losing trade period because of the they lost like yeah. more established players than came in. But in terms of navigating the situation that was inevitable, Danaher wanted yeah. to leave. Adam Saad was never going to stay. Uh, same with Fantasia. Yeah. He's been mentally checked out for a while, yeah. though, it seems. Um, they've done well other than the fact that they couldn't quite bring in Dunkley. Yeah. But again, Dunkley was a contracted player. Yeah, Bulldogs that, wanted to keep him. They yeah. asked for two firsts. Um, you can't really mark against yeah. Essendon for the not The dogs didn't really that. want first as well, sort of thing. Yeah, they didn't want first this year, but yeah. they could. I mean, a deal could have yeah. probably been struck, but uh, there's no real need for Essendon to have overpaid there. Yeah. But I do think it depends on your perspective here. With three top ten picks, they could do a port. And in they did 2018. very well get an eight for Saad. I'd say, like realistically, you'd pick Saad as someone worth from, like those mid teens sort of pick rather than yeah. pick eight. But that was probably Carlton to an extent shit in the bed and not splitting the, their first round picks before they declared their interest in Saad yeah yeah well, that's probably true but Carlton again also it's still know, like it's still not bad business by them but they could have played it probably a little, slightly smarter but ultimately it's worth it for them on, back on their perspective briefly yeah and I mean um, what was I going to say uh, sorry no Carlton don't have the same value for like their priorities yeah, are different they've had that eight. many picks over the years yeah. like they should not care about picks at this point Th- there is an argument for just getting the deal done and moving yeah. on um, to some extent where do you see Essendon in terms of the push for finals next year considering how bad the season ended this year they did make finals the year before where do you think they sit now based on the trade period in terms of whether they've improved or not I guess they're probably Less likely to make finals. I don't think they'll make it next year. Like too many teams have probably improved that yeah. are going to continue to improve in the draft and preseason. Whereas Essendon's probably in a position where they're going to stagnate and sort of yeah, I mean probably get worse and sort of probably have to bite the bullet and sort of embrace a bit more of a rebuild. I think I think they have been rebuilding. Yeah, right? like I, I, they have taken early picks. Andrew McGrath was picked one a number yeah. of years ago. They're going to have six, seven, and eight this year. Kyle Langford was a first rounder a couple of years before that. I think there's enough youth to be getting on with to be honest and Doe Danaher and Fantasia probably weren't adding that much over the last yeah, two was, or three years that anyway. was my thing with Fantasia I was going to say was he's, he's probably more best 25 rather than sort of in that yeah. 18 starting on the I field I think he everywhere. just couldn't get on the park to be yeah. honest um, Saad is the big loss but um, obviously like top 5 in their BNF the past 3-4 years or whatever it is yeah but I think Caldwell is another player who was a first rounder two years ago like they've, they've got the youth I I, yeah. I do think Essendon are not going to I'm just quietly confident Essendon are, 
maybe not improve, but probably around the mark for finals again. That's the way yeah. I see it. I'm not sold. Fair enough, fair enough. That is another conversation yeah. for another pod. Uh, Fremantle, again, not a big team to talk about in terms Quite of action. Long. Yeah. Um, Jesse Hogan left the club, and your picks are 12, 32, and 55. There's not really too much to say other than how do you reflect on the Jesse Hogan debacle considering this was your dream trade like was, three years yeah, ago. Yeah, like, because he was sort of like, I had a lot of faith that he'd be that sort of player that we'd sort of needed because we did need a key forward in the future. Yeah. And we still sort of... Tabin has had his best year to date, obviously, but I'm still not... I still want to see another year of consistent performance from him before I'm sort of fully... Yeah. Like, yay, Tabin, sort of thing. But like, <laughs> It's going to take more yeah. than one year, mate. Considering how much we spent on Hogan initially, getting 54 back for him feels a little light. But obviously, I'm not 100% sure about how his salary situation works, whether how much of those incentives True. and stuff count by default. Like, that was another theme of this trade period in particular, yeah. like more so than ever, is players who are overpaid going for nothing. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like... And te- their old team paying bits of their salary. Like, yeah, That's probably yeah, that's why... It. I'm assuming that's probably why Freo didn't get much is because yeah. his salary must have been less incentives based than the rumours. Sort of. And he was more or less sacked as well. Yeah. And it's hard to have bargaining power when you've basically yeah. maybe not come out and sacked him, but it's fairly obvious what's happened yeah. there. Um, like when his lawyer literally walks out of court after he's been done for bus and quarantine saying, yeah, he might be in a rugby state, so please spend his conviction. Yeah, right. Interesting. That's literally what happened. Like, his lawyer said that while he was getting in shit for, like, that quarantine break. His lawyer was like, yeah, can you please spend his conviction because he might be moving to a rugby state? That's weird. And doesn't need this on his record yeah, okay. or whatever. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I, mean, I think we've covered it with Frio, but probably just sustained a small loss, but probably didn't need yeah. to make those moves. And culturally, I think it was a good move yeah. to show that, like, we're really not going to put up with bloody clowns. Yeah, Cam McCarthy like. gone in similar fashion. Not similar fashion, but... I'll say, yeah, he doesn't have... He didn't have that, that track record, like... Yeah. He, no, not to the yeah, same extent, yeah. but obviously... He's, he hasn't had any off-field issues other than sort of like... Uh, no, no no incidents as such, yeah. but I think... Nothing no noted in the media or anything. No, like but I think everyone can... He enjoys gather. a night out, but there's yeah. nothing like... He hasn't misbehaved or done anything to like embarrass he himself. He doesn't strike me as the most committed player. Mm. But yeah. He does enjoy a night out. But you're obviously. right, it's, it's not yeah. to the same extent, definitely. Yeah. Um, Geelong, for me, probably the one of the MVPs. biggest... In, I think the MVPs, personally. Um, yeah. Not the Bulldogs. We'll talk about that later. Lockie Fogarty and Nakaya Cockatoo left. Um, fairly early picks that kind of didn't pan out for both of yeah. those players. Um, Jeremy Cameron, Isaac Smith, Sean Higgins in. And Three very tra- good ins. They've traded out of the draft so to some extent. They don't enter until pick 51. Um, Tim Kelly basically becomes Jeremy Cameron, and that's probably the most ideal piece of business. That, uh, that you could hope for losing Tim Kelly at the time, one of the bit, like top 10 mid in the comp or whatever. Um, and they've actually added two future second round selections as well. Yeah. So do you think, this is the Hawthorne question again, do you think this sort of st- um, strategy is sustainable for the Cats? Oh, probably the way that they're sort of going. Like, they've, like a few of those guys like Higgins and Smith, they've brought in a pretty old, even Jeremy Smith's probably, or Jeremy Cameron, so he's probably pushing closer to... He's my age, which is 27. Okay, so he's, yeah, he's, he's, got, he's, he's right. got a reasonable amount in the tank then. Yeah. He's probably got six, seven years in the tank at least, but like yeah. Smith and Higgins probably two, three years maybe. Yeah. Like yeah, well, I think they're on less multi-year of, contracts, yeah. so yeah. Like, you'd be able to get a bit more out of them because they'd be carrying less of a load than they would have been with their old teams. Like, yeah. You'll get more runs out of them on a team with Geelong that's more evenly spread with talent. Still playing good football too. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think this is really really good pickups and again like yeah. I think it's sustainable because like I said Geelong are probably one of the few genuine destination clubs that players yeah. like a Sean Higgins or an Isaac Smith Isaac Smith plays for Hawthorne and, that's their rival and the thing is like a lot of good football has come out of that like rurally Victoria area near like Geelong yeah. like it just that coastal area sort of near Geelong even like that yeah. I don't know the name of it but like Paddy Dangerfield's not from Geelong he's from some beach that's like near right. Geelong like Jez Cameron's from like one of those sort of towns yeah so they sort of get that appeal, kind of like how we get a crack at all the WA people. They probably get a crack at that good region of regional Victoria. Yes, I guess so. Or maybe there is a go home factor there for sure. But I think it's like also Jack Stephen even he had that sort of go home factor going to Geelong rather than staying in Melbourne. Yeah, not that he's panned out necessarily. I do think it's the institution of the Geelong Footy Club as well. That's probably more of a draw than the actual hometown, though. Yeah. But Geelong. a lot of these guys are from sort of that more. Yeah, but I, I yeah. genuinely think if Geelong was a shithole of a club, no one would go back there. Well, obviously not, but yeah, it does help being a good club. Like. Yeah, but I mean, 
few can parallel Geelong over the last 20 years for success or for 15 years. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, I think we're, yeah. we're kind of saying the same thing. Um, Geelong good. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, Geelong good, basically. Um, <laughs> where do they sit? Do you think they're going to be around the mark again? Because yeah, some people certainly. Are, some people are doing the typical Geelong slide down the ladder thing. No, nah, they've tooled up far too well this year for me to yeah. give them the down, like, yeah, I'd I, say I don't know if they'll improve, but I think they can sort of yeah, sustain. Yeah, it's hard to I think sustain. A, yeah, they're I, in a position to sustain. I don't. I don't find any real compelling arguments for them dropping down. So yeah. they're too old to sort of see that internal improvement. Then the paces they've brought in are just going to help them sustain what they had. Yeah, I think they actually got, the Jeremy Cameron probably improves them more than I think because like oh definitely we talk, like we talked about like going into the, like the finals like how they sort of needed that second forward to take the target off Hawkins and now they've got that. I think they've got, well. They've now got the last two common medalists. Danger can go back in the guts a bit more with this for yeah. sure. Like that's sort of another ancillary benefit. They've probably got the best forward line in the comp now. Yeah. When you think about it, so yeah. yeah, and it's a stronger, strong everywhere across the field. Let's talk about the Gold Coast. Another quiet team here. Out Peter Wright, which is again kind of shit. Because salary dumping because he was on yeah. good money. That's pretty much what that was. It's a salary dump, and it's just bad business overall he was a top 10 pick if I'm not mistaken the thing is though like the thing is with these Gold Coast sort of guys like they had to pay them a lot to get them to stay early yeah yeah no I understand like, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of like yeah and they didn't have they weren't in a position when people wanted to come to their clubs so they had to fill their salary cap anyway yeah. so they were happy paying these young kids to stay there a bit more but now that he's had a few key fours come in and overtake his position like mm. it looks stupid but back when they gave him that extension it was his position to sort of lose yeah I suppose I suppose but it's just ended up as a big fail to be honest for it. I mean it's not like it was there a with... while like he was there five oh you couldn't really call it a success could you mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's a success but I'm not saying it's a fail like, sort I think of like... it's a failure I, I think he's not in their plans which is telling for yeah top eight pick but the, it was a top eight pick from a fair while ago. It was like four, 2014. He's been there like yeah. six, seven years. He's had a pretty solid stint, and they've drafted guys like Ben King that have sort of yeah. come in and overtaken him. Like, yeah. Wait. So what's the argument for being a success? I'm sort of saying like the fact it was a salary dump's not so bad because he would have right. left four years ago if they didn't pay okay. what they paid him. Sort of what I'm getting at. Sure. Yeah. Either way, like, I just compare it to GWS, who actually can't afford to be dumping these players, which, I don't know, Gold Coast, it, it, in hindsight, it was just a big stinker of a fart, but they, I guess in terms of this off-season, it's not too bad. But uh, they also recruited Rory Atkins, Oleg Markov, just a couple of, probably going to be struggling to be best 22 at Gold Coast as well, so it kind of just really added mature depth, um, and out, a couple that's of outside been a bit of a fame for him the past couple of years. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a sound fame. strategy, I think, because we obviously see what kind of young talent they have probably the best in the league yeah. in terms of like raw potential um they don't need to be going for like an a grade mid i mean they, i'm sure they'd yeah. love one but they don't need it like yeah. it's it's there to they're there to support the rouse um, the andersons the yeah exactly right the coaches the rankins and they still hold picks 5 27 37 so yeah. you know uh, they're in a good position there's nothing really to yeah. to say um, they're keeping on with their process they're doing they've sort of had a plan the past couple of years they're sticking with it and it's sort of starting to pay dividends for him and and Peter Wright leaving is probably one of the like when was the last time they had an off season when they only lost one one former top 10 pick do you know what I mean and it's one that wasn't playing for him compared to like yeah 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 exactly Um, alright the Giants now the other expansion team lost Jai Caldwell Jeremy Cameron Aiden Kaur Zach Langdon and Zach Williams for the uh, for the ins of Jesse Hogan and Braden Proust they hold four top 20 picks and uh, obviously had to deal with most of the transactions this trade period, but kind of for the wrong reasons. It was mostly players leaving. Um, Jeremy Cameron obviously is... I mean, they kind of lose players yearly. Just as a circumstance of how they geared up when they first came into the league. But, but Jess, Jeremy Cameron and Zach Williams are two that leave pillars. and I'm like, ooh, that's, that's like, obviously not part of the plan. My first thought when I saw like the ins and outs for GWS is like, is this the year? Like, cause they've had a bad like football year on the field. Now they've lost a few guys. Is this sort of the year where like the GWS thing's sort of over and now like year after year we're going to sort of start to see those mm. other guys sort of go, yeah, this is fun Maybe. while it lasted. Now I want to finish my career back home in Victoria or whatever. Maybe. I think Do you what think is... it's sort of that... 
It could be, but, the they, form, but they have signed the, some good players on long co- term contracts. Stephen Kinelia, I know they just dropped him, but yeah, as I say, long term contracts doesn't seem to matter. Like, look at the situation where, like, I suppose, but I, yeah, I don't know. I don't get the sense that a Kinelia and Whitfield would get up and leave. But I don't know. I guess it mm-hmm. is unpredictable now. No. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's panic stations yet. But Jeremy Cameron, as a player, as a key forward, he's probably one of the hardest players on their list to replace. Yeah. He was like. When you think GWS, you think Jeremy Cameron as well, like because he was there from the beginning. Like, yeah, he he was a pillar of that club. Yeah, he was one of the most exciting talents. Like, it was, like even reading the article about him talking about leaving, it was like the hardest thing he had to do. He reckons like, yeah, because he was so proud of what he'd done up there. He loved everyone up there. Like, yeah. What do you think about the recruits of Hogan and Pruce? I think they they have done very well there. Like for the prices they've paid for both those players, they've yeah. got in through the door two players that can definitely help them a lot yeah. particularly Bruce like yeah, they've needed that actual in his prime not some has been on his last leg sort of Ruckman no yeah. offence to Mummy and Sauce Jacobs but you wanted someone in his sort of prime that can sort of get around the field and he's a player that should have gone yeah. to uh, GWS three years ago exactly was, like, he shouldn't have gone to bloody Melbourne that was questionable um but anyway, they've ended up with him anyway. Yeah, I, th- I think you're not going to replace Jeremy Cameron, but to get a Jesse Hogan in, who um, as well, who has for some as potential. cheap as you got him in too, for some potential, um, that's you know a right. bit of a plus, I guess. I wouldn't expect him to match Jeremy Cameron for output ever, but um, he has the potential to get close if everything, if the I, planets align. I, he's a I, guy I, where all the planets need to align, obviously. But but his best season's nowhere near Jeremy Cameron. To be yeah. Even I'm saying he's still talented, but he's like. It's like a Jack Darling level of talent, whereas Jeremy Cameron, on his day, is like the best in the league. Yeah. So, but I mean, again, I'm not I'm, uh, like he, he could be a good pickup for him for sure. Um, yeah. Enough about GWS. We got uh, Hawthorne now, a uh, team that lost Isaac Smith yeah. um, and recruited Carl Hardigan. They really needed a key back, yeah. and Tom Phillips kind of replaces Smith, who's a younger yeah. and slightly worse version. Um, but kind of fits their profile as well. So yeah. they're getting younger, and that was a strategy they had at the start of the off-season, and they hold picks 4, 24, and 45-plus. Pick 4's got to be the earliest pick in a long time, probably sure. since, like, Buddy Franklin. Because uh. I think they put Mitch Thorpe in 2006. Mm. I couldn't tell you how they went in 05. I'm pretty sure Buddy was 04, and he was, like, pick uh. 3 or something like that. Maybe maybe later. Yeah, it'd be a solid long time between drinks. Yeah. That's for sure. Um Obviously, adding youth is something that they've avoided. They've been one of the oldest lists for a long time, but um, they've turned that strategy around and they, they really want to get the kids in. Maybe they don't rate the list yeah. on terms of like ready-made talent as much as they used to. Yeah. Um, we have to say this was just a quietly productive yeah. trade period for them. And I think the draft is like Adelaide. Yeah. The draft is going to be where... Where they make that... like. You said said they have pick four. I could see them going for someone like a Denver Granger Barras or something like that. True, just sort of true. just throwing a name out there, like because you said key back, like Carl yep. Hardigan's realistically not a permanent solution for yep. their key back needs. Agreed. So like, they could take someone like a Granger Barras or like well, there's a few good key tools really, which is where they need. They probably need on both ends. So they do, I think. Yeah, there's probably someone going to be there at four for like them. Like a Phil Thorpe or however you yeah, say yeah. his name. But talking about Adelaide getting him, but I don't that's know just because he's South Australian. Yeah, isn't exactly. That's sort of the so, whole. but I could see them also fl- uh, flipping four for like two later picks, like yeah. in the top Trading twelve down. or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I think they were one of the teams people were talking about trading down. But yeah, yeah, I think there's value in that because I think they need quantity of youth as much as they need quality. Sure. Um, it's not really much too much more to say about Hawthorne. I think, as yeah. we said, their their real um, test or their their important part of the trade period of this off season will be the draft. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But like you could sort of say that with any team, like it's either free agency or the drafts. Like sort of they like. Yeah time to shine for like a team in a given off season it's yeah. one or the other you don't really see teams shine in both too often no, I suppose not unless they're trading for picks yeah. <laughs> well yeah you, you wouldn't get established yeah. talent and elite yeah. draft picks that's very yeah. rare but I mean yeah Hawthorne like it was always going to be the draft same yeah. with Adelaide and yeah. a few others Melbourne uh, they've lost Braden Pruce and Mitch Hannon so no yeah. one too important and they've arrived or have gained rather Ben Brown yeah, and they traded into the top twenty of this year's draft. So they traded their future first with Brisbane, yep. and hold pick eighteen and nineteen in this draft as well. So they obviously see something in this draft. Um, what are your thoughts on Ben Brown's ability? He's certainly still capable of being a top 
four or five k forward in the league. I feel like yeah. Prior to this year, he's the only guy that's kicked sixty plus like the past three years or whatever, discounting Corona season. Yeah, well, I mean, no, he and it was just sort of like now that he was in a team where his service was getting a bit worse. That's sort of what made him look bad, rather than yeah, it was the team around him that sort of contributed to his. Yeah, for sure. I feel, the, rather the, than him. This is the worst team he's played in, and obviously yeah. his output drops off. But he's like, he's a real good lead up forward. I think he's criticised for what he does when the ball hits the ground and not being good yeah. around the ground. But I don't That's think you, can really, you can't really argue with 60 goals plus every yeah. year. This is the clear outlier. So I think Melbourne have got a bargain there. Um, pick 26 was what they And it's a for. need for them as well, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously they're also keeping an eye on the draft. Do you think to do you, to what extent do you think Melbourne have all the kids they need for the next push? It's sort of weird because a lot of the people that you'd consider Melbourne's kids at this point are probably in that twenty two to twenty six sort of age profile rather than yeah actual sort of the kid age profile. I guess a way to reframe that question is: Do they need to hit the draft more? Is the list ready to, to? I think that wouldn't hurt them to hit the draft more. Like yeah. Like, they've sort of, they had the good year 18, had the down year 19, sort of came back up a bit this year. But, like, they probably still need that boost. Maybe, like, something similar to what happened with Port Adelaide, but, like, mm. where they injected a bit of youth. Yeah. I guess like, so. maybe not to the extent they did, obviously, but... Well, they took Jackson and Pickett last year. Yeah. Uh, with 18 and 19. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know without, like, without knowing who's going to be available around those, yeah. those picks, but... Might even be a trade-up if there's someone you like who's sort of yeah. on your board. True. It's, Fallen more than you thought they would. True. Yeah, potentially. Um, yeah. With this draft, like it's going to be teams are going to value picks so vastly different this year, especially with the lack of scouting opportunity they've had. Yeah. Sorry, did you say value them less? Yeah, value prospects differently. Like sorry, one yeah, team's yeah. going to value a set of prospects way differently than. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, like, there's so much less data on kids. Yeah, exactly. This year, um, which we will talk about in future podcasts. We will be doing draft podcasts as well. So, yeah, quietly productive off-season for Melbourne. Um, huh? And then the draft yet to come. North Melbourne, uh, a bit of a talked-about team. I've done a video on them this off-season as well, just for the players that they're bleeding. But they've lost, uh, in addition to delisting like 11 players or something stupid, they traded Higgins and Brown, yeah. who two years ago were two of their best players, probably number one and two with Cunnington hmm. maybe as well. yeah. But to their credit, they have actually added some players as well. So they didn't just dump players. They got Aiden Corin, who was yep. the top 10 in the GWS BNF. He's a good lockdown defender. Lockie Young, who I believe is Hayden Young's brother from Possibly the Bulldogs. So. Yeah, 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 his yeah. Brother. yeah, it is. Jaden Stevenson, who I, I'm a Rising fan star, of. Yeah. very good player. I wanted Freo to have a bit more of a look at Stevenson, but realistically, a Melbourne team was always going to have the yeah. inside track on that deal. Yeah, and then Atu D2 um, picked up. As well, yep. going to North. So again, like I don't know too much about this R two kid. He's debuted for Collingwood. Yeah, he's played three, four games, I believe. Yeah, um, at least he's a young midfield talent. So at least they're being productive in getting those guys in. They hold picks two, eleven, and thirty. I think it's kind of been a mixed off season. Um, obviously, new coach as well. Yep. Do you, Do you think this has been a net positive this trade period? Bearing in mind the players they've lost. Yeah, it's sort of like they've done well considering they've sort of put it out there like, yeah, we're very tall and we're bloody yep. pushing oldies out the door like so they've sort of not just pushed oldies out the door they've sort of replaced them a bit which is good yeah that's true that's it it's better I think, than probably like that year where they pushed out like Burma Harvey and those sort of dudes and like yeah. didn't really replace them like they've yeah. at least sort of brought in some new guys to sort of play some different roles for them and add something different to their team yeah that's a very good point I think rather I think, than just dumping four talented players and saying whoever you've got yeah step up it could have been worse in that they could have dumped Brown and um, not brought anyone in, like you said. But like, like I think Jaden Stevenson kind of fell into their laps a little bit. So yeah. I, I do think he is the the variable here. If they don't take up pick up Stevenson, I think this looks a little bit weak. But I think Stevenson is a very good talent, yeah. former North fan. So um, I do. There's something nice about that. Uh, they cut hard and, like I said, added some good youth. What do you think of the decision to get rid of Brown, though? Do you think... I think Brown specifically was stupid, Cole, from their behalf. He's yeah. not that old. He's only like 20. He's had one bad season. Or whatever, he? Exactly. And one bad season. And he's a player that relies on the rest of his team being up and about good service. Yeah. Because like you said, he's not really a crummer. Yeah. So you need good crummers around him. Mm. You need good midfield kickers hitting him. I think my argument for it is that if, if they don't want Brown as part of their future because of his age, because he's like 27, 28, and that's fine. Maybe they don't see his strengths as complementing their team. That's fine, but they also sold him at his lowest value. Yeah. He was a common medalist contender every yeah. year up until now. 
commit one more year. Imagine and, if they traded him last year instead of this year. They could yeah. have got two first. They could have probably got... Well, if Jeremy Cameron got three first, they could have got probably two yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, I hope he does well. Yeah. Let's talk about Port. Um, no one left as such, but they recruited Alia Alia and Orazio Fantasia. So, Mate, according to Damien Barrett, they're great. Yeah, what did you think about his rating of Port Adelaide here? I, I don't necessarily disagree with his logic. Like, they were a kick away from beating the Premier in a prelim final. Like, And they've brought in two guys that are best 22 for them, I'd say. Like, yep. So, I think it's good for them. Like, they haven't played anything. Like, they've still got a dra- strong draft, well, the same draft hand. Yeah. So, I think they've done well. Yeah, so they didn't have a first rounder and they've yeah. picked up two... Um, Best 22, maybe best 25. Not sure where Fantasia fits into it, but they really needed a key back as well. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. But, yeah. And I, secondary ruck, I think they're sort of eyeing him off as a little bit. You know, yeah, yeah. Dabble in that. I think anytime you, you consolidate your best 25 without uh, having to throw around too many picks, um, yeah, it's a bit of a yeah. success. I, I think where I fell short of was he was very complimentary. Yeah, he was like, it was outstanding. Like, I wouldn't say outstanding. I'd say it was good. I like, think I think Carlton had the better trade period. Like, mm-hmm. he ranked... I think the AFL side also ranked Port ahead of Carlton in terms of their trade period, which yeah. I struggled to agree with. I think with. part of that logic is probably a lot of the reporters sort of hanging on to that, them not flipping eight into two later first thing. I think that's sort of... Right. I think a lot of reporters are hanging on to that okay. idea quite hard. Gotcha. Fair enough. Um, that being said, shrewd business by Port Adelaide. That's, I'd give them an 8 out of 10 if it was my club. Yeah. I'd be like, this is a really good deal. But then I think um, Carlton probably did better. Yeah. I don't know what I'm comparing with Carlton, but it was just an example. So, yeah, solid business from Port Adelaide. Yeah. And they should be around the mic again next year, I think. For sure. Richmond, another quiet team. They lost Jack Higgins and Oleg Markov. And they have their normal picks of 17, 36, yeah. and 61. So one of the quietest team... In this trade period, they shed a couple of decent kids. I think I'm a big Jack Higgins fan. Yeah. I think he's it's got been a, a bit of their fame though. Like if you bleeding players, it's like guys not in there 22 regularly. Like yeah, it's been a bit of a fame with a team that's that good. Obviously, yeah, it especially is. Especially when they keep bringing good people in through the door, it's obviously going to be a fame. You're going to lose some other guys. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think that's just the natural side of being the top, and there's not yeah. a lot of opportunities for someone like a Higgins. Um, they still have a first rounder. Um, and the other thing is as well, they're probably close to the cap, so yeah. they can't really match deals for someone like a Higgins who's probably offered more opportunity at St. Kilda. Yeah. In the Premier League, there's this idea that if you, at the top, you need to keep reinvesting in the team and spending money to stay at the top. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that really applies to Richmond because, um, at first of all, they added Lynch 12 months yeah. ago where they heavily invested in key forward and he's been really good for them. Second of all, we have a salary cap. Yeah. So there's only so much Richmond can invest in terms of that. So well, they can invest. It's just getting that value for money. Like, like if they're good with their draft picks, keep them on their rookie deals or whatever. What I mean is like they couldn't go out and buy the best player yeah, in the world. Like, think, like yeah. Manchester United could if they yeah, were top of the t- table. Yeah, that's, that's what I was comparing why to. Why I like salary caps compared to soccer. <laughs> yeah, salary caps are a great, great notion. Um, so not a lot to report about Richmond. I still think they're yeah. going to be probably the yeah. team to beat. Um, yeah. No real. I mean, they've still got a first rounder as yeah. well. So just add a good kid to their list and that'll put them in good stead. Bloody earth. We've got four teams left. Let's go with St. Kilda. Another team I think has done really well. So they lost yeah. Nick Hind and they've recruited Brad Crouch, Sean McKernan, and Jack Higgins. So two best 22 players out there. And then yeah. Higgins is maybe a role player. Um, pick 21 is when they enter the draft. I don't think they had a first rounder going They had into this. 17 or something, I think. Or maybe 17. Oh, I think maybe 17's made its way to Richmond. Yeah. Um, I think that's what it is. They've, yeah, basically gone down four picks probably. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. They've gone down four picks. So, I mean, they still hold a good pick. Yeah. Um, I think this is a great piece of business for them. I think Brad Crouch consolidates that midfield. As we alluded yeah. to, he's a very good player and he adds to... And they didn't have to give up a pick for him in the end. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah. they got him for, well, yeah, for free other than yeah. salary. So, um, great business there. They bluff St. Kilda or... Sorry, Adelaide or they weren't yep. bluffing, who knows. But either way, they got the job done. Brad Crouch is a very talented player and he's right in that age bracket of that 26, 27 yeah. year old. Um, he along with Steele, with your Seb Ross, um, Zach Jones, like these guys are yeah. sort of at that right age to sort of become real, real good players. So really happy with that. And I think Jackie Brad Hill, even he's a little yeah. older, but he's... Yeah, he's like 27, group. 28. Yeah. So that's still still quite right. 
Um, Jack Higgins adds another dynamic to their forward line as yep. well. They've got Gresham and stuff like that as well, and Butler. But um, yeah. you can't have too many of these creative, talented forwards. And yeah. I think, and a lot of those guys probably want some midfield minutes as well. So I think yep. yeah, they're gonna have a bit even of, Higgins. I believe yeah. was a midfielder in. Well, this that's why here. Wiggins yeah. sort of partly went to Science because he wanted more midfield. Is that crack, right? I didn't I actually yeah. catch he's that. He's getting a bit of a midfield crack there as well. So he's a bit of a mid. Like I think he's yeah. a talented mid. Um, obviously he's small, but yeah. I think he adds a different dynamic. So. Yeah, um, McKernan is a depth role player yeah. as well, which you know you need. He's to, good, steady, to push, dependable yeah. guy. Nothing, not a world beater, but he'll do his job. Exactly. So I, I had St Kilda just outside my top three. Like I made a video the other day with my yeah. top three winners, and St Kilda were the team that I left yeah. out. And someone was like, "God, you hate St Kilda," <laughs> but I don't. I think they did. I think they've done really well. So yeah. um, we'll talk about Sydney. Alia Alia left. Tom mm. Hickey came in. So some real star-studded trades there um <laughs> pick uh tom hickey joins his fourth club yeah. as well they enter the draft at three um yeah. and the next pick is 31 they've added added a ruck to their credit yeah. we joke about tom hickey not being um a star but like he actually adds a ruck yeah. to their list which they desperately need um they have a thing for pinching eagles rucks don't yeah they? i think he's the third or fourth that i can think of so you got tom hickey callum sinclair yeah. Seby mark Seby yeah. and jason ball as well back in the day so yeah, a bit of a trend there. Um, other than that, I, were you a little bit surprised they let Aaliyah Aaliyah go? I sort of was. Like, if if he sort of wanted out, like, it was going to be yeah. hard to sort of stop him. So they probably figured optimize now rather than see him walk or whatever. Yeah, do you think... Because uh, he seems to be fairly highly rated and he's right in that r- reasonable yeah. age bracket for them. Um, contracted, do you... Is this kind of a trend? Like, I feel like clubs are being very lenient to contracted players wanting to leave. Like, there's yeah. one thing to maximize their value to try and trade him at their highest value, but they traded him yeah. for a future second. So, part of me just thinks, oh, he wants to leave. Let's yeah. make it happen. Do you know what I mean? There's a bit yeah. of a trend of that. Still, the last year they stuck to their guns with Papley, and now he's happy to stay. True. Maybe they don't really yeah. care for Ali really, but I thought he'd be better value than a future second. To yeah. Them. It's probably about right, considering what you see someone like Proust go for. Like, I'd say Proust is more valuable to a team. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. Oh, he went for Proust is 31, 31, which yeah. is probably around the same range. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I do we agree that Sydney are probably still in that period where they just need to add youth to yeah. the draft. Like, I don't think we, we needed them to, to trade in any players. Like, I think they're yeah. in a good spot. Um. I like their drafting. Yeah. Most years they pick up kids. I'm like, yes, he's good. Like your yeah. Florence, your Dylan Stevens, stuff like that. Yeah. They'll probably get a key because there's a few keys at the top and they yeah. might, they're might. probably been in need of a... Might look at Paddy McCartan because yeah. they got his brother. Um, yeah, they've sort of been conversing with him. If they need a key back now because of Ali Ali is gone, um, you're probably looking at either that Phil Thorpe kid or... Um, Granger Barras. Granger or, Barras or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. A few keys available right at the top. Not too much more to say about them. Again, another team yeah. that the draft is going to be where They're they the made their move. Yeah. yeah, My boys, West Coast, um, quietly very happy with his offseason. Yeah, I was quite impressed. So you had Tom Hickey leave. Um, we had a number of rocks on the list. Bailey yeah. Williams is a player with a lot of talent. And he had a drawback over East as well, like with his family situation. He'd prefer to be back East Hickey, so that was probably... Hickey. I didn't even catch the family yeah. part of it. I just thought from an ava- from a like opportunity standpoint, yeah. Sydney, we're going to offer him And games. that as well, but yeah, it was also being closer so his family could fly in. It was like an hour flight instead of like three-hour flight, that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. So they brought in Zach Langdon and Alex Witherden, and the Langdon one's good, I think. He sort of came out of the scene. For the price, it was very, very good yeah. little pick-up, low-key. He had a good first year. He was a mature ager from Claremont as a small forward. Uh, had a good first season. Not done a lot since, but he's only 25. Has midfield aspirations, and I think the Eagles need a pressure forward, so they've identified yeah. a need here. He's got to remind me from what little I've seen a bit of Vanables. Like, so, so like if they're worried with Vanables' health and everything, he sort yeah. of brings a bit of that sort of... Yeah, well, player type. I think Venables probably had more. The Venables different player. Yeah, but like a lot more potential, but um, yeah, upside was certainly. He's stronger. probably Gornski as well. Uh, Venables hasn't played a game in two years. I think he's done. Because um, you're saying he still gets headaches or something, weren't you? Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of like info- Like, uh, what's the word? Um, innuendo. Not innuendo, but just like unconfirmed rumors that he's yeah. still waking up with headaches and not doing so well. So that sucks. Yeah. For for those who don't know, he got KO'd right in front of me. Um, like it. Like someone's knee came in the yeah. other direction, and you heard the slap from mm. like third tier. So, yeah, poor poor fella, not doing too well. But um, Langdon is good because we've if you look at the eighteen Premiership team, we lost Lacra, Willie Rioli's gone from that team, yeah. Venables has gone from that team. 
uh, off the top of my head. So we haven't replaced three good forwards yeah. there. Um, so we want about Venables. He played a role that year at least. Um, played the whole season. So to not replace those guys, it's still obviously a glaring issue. We've tried to replace them. Guys like Jermaine Jones, yeah. um, Anthony Tracy, guys who haven't quite stuck it together. Um, so Langdon fills a need. And the one I'm actually really happy about is Witherden. Yeah, um, I really liked the Witherden pickup for you guys. Yeah. Ready-made Hearn replacement. I didn't realise how young he is either. Yeah, he's... he's 22 like, or 3 yeah. or something. Yeah. So he I thought he was mid-20s. Third in the Rising Star of the Year in his first season. Yeah. Hasn't had a crack and evidently Brisbane didn't rate him that much. Um, but I think from the perspective, the Eagles didn't have much to trade this offseason, having traded everything for Tim Kelly, yeah. everything in the world. Um, there wasn't really too much we could do. So to add two best 25 players, with it probably won't start round one, but it'll probably be an emergency. Um, from that perspective, I think the Eagles have done really well. So yeah. um, really happy with that. We won't labor that too much more on them because, again, it was a fairly quiet one. The Bulldogs are an interesting one for me. And they're our final team in this podcast. Uh, Lockie Young is the only player that left. But they've, they've recruited Mitch Hannon, Stefan Martin, Adam Trelaw. And they enter the draft at pick 26. Bearing in mind, pick one will be likely their matched bid yeah, for yeah. Jamara Ugal Hagen. So they're probably getting a number one quality excuse me, prospect in this draft as well. So yeah. the, the way they shuffle their picks down as well from 14... Smart, very it's smart. Like good with the picks and the points and all that jazz. Exactly. So basically the effect of that, for those who don't know, will be that they can use points to match a pick one bid and then still have some presence in the draft. Whereas if they'd kept 14 and not had later picks, they would yeah. have used 14 to match the bid and they basically would have just shuffled back further in the yeah. draft. So they stay relevant. They're going to get Hagen and maybe a second rounder as well. So... Pretty shrewd business, yeah. and obviously they recruited probably the second biggest star of this offseason, Adam Trelaw. Is he in need, though? That's my big thing. See, this is the the kind of debate. So uh, if you look at from the perspective of list, uh, sorry, negotiation and the way they've navigated through this trade period... The I value, get, get the them, value of they've gotten is outstanding. Yeah, I think, I think you give them full marks of that. Yeah. In terms of have they improved their best 22 to the same extent as Geelong or Carlton? No. The, yeah, that's what I argue, no, and the reason why, like, what, what do you think? Well, because Dunkley's already wanting to leave because he can't get inside midfield minutes. Now you bring in Trelaw, like, they've got Bont, McRae, Bailey, Smith, like, all these guys yeah. can't get inside midfield minutes and not, and most of them aren't too well equipped for other roles, I don't necessarily So, I mean, you think. can throw Bont forward, Yeah. but do you want to throw but Bont But that's forward? not maxim- maximising Bont at all. Like, yeah, you, which is important. He's your best yeah, player, like, I would compared say. Compared so. to, like... To contrast throwing Bont forward to like contrast with throwing Fife forward, like you can get more out of Fife forward than I think you can Bont. Like Bont's so yeah. much more valuable in the midfield compared to forward. He's a viable forward, but he's an elite midfielder, whereas Fife's an elite forward and a lot of elite midfielder and probably close to an elite forward. Yeah, I'd probably debate the elite forward part. Mm. Well, his goal kicking and stuff's a different, yeah. yeah, but yeah. in terms of his ability to lead and take a grab and stuff. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm on the same page as you here. While it was a great trade period in terms of yeah, value, did they improve their best 22 that much? Might have actually a tricky time neg- like navigating yeah. all those resources and optimizing their talent. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe yeah. Trelaw comes in, plays an outstanding role. Yeah. Dunkley gets his gig back on the wing. Maybe mm. he really carves out a niche as second ruck. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Martin, while Tim English plays forward. I think that's what they're, <laughs> they're saying now. Um so, yeah, not, not absolutely perfect. Mm. I think they probably could have looked at a key defender and some goal-scoring power. So, yeah. I think a Higgins or a Ben Brown. Yeah, um, that would have been better. Tom McDonald probably would have gone very cheap. I don't know. Yeah. Because um, Jamara Hugo Hagen's going to need to develop as well. Yeah. Um, but Josh Bruce really didn't have the year that they were hoping for as well. Um, and a key back, like yeah. someone like an Aaliyah Aaliyah. Or, well, they know. can sort of... Well, if Hugo Hagen sort of pans out, they could almost send Norton back back. They could. They could. Yeah. That is definitely a viable option. Again, it's tough because he's shown a lot as a forward, but there's no reason yeah. he can't play back. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, you got to give the Bulldogs an A for performance, but um, yeah, like you, could, they, everyone would make the deals they made. Like, yeah, you're just getting yeah. that much value for like a player as good as Adam Troll. Like, it was virtually a second rounder. Like yeah. when you, um, when you like equalize yeah, it all, especially out. when you know Dunkley's probably going to want out again next year. Yeah, uh, almost certainly now yeah. that Trelaw's come in, like you'd think. If, if his yeah. motivation is opportunity in the midfield, yeah. then you'd think that Trelaw makes that harder. So, yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's we've come to an end of the podcast. Um, yep. 
I hope we timed that all right. I have no idea how long we've been going for, but um, going for a bit, close yeah. to an hour, I think. Yeah, It'll that's probably work all right. out nicely. Shouldn't edit out too badly though, because these two roll continuously for you. Yeah, that's right. That's cool. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So very interesting trade period, tumultuous, dramatic. Probably one of the most dramatic I can recall. Oh. Um, certainly the most surprising in terms of this trelaw thing. It's fairly fairly unprecedented. As I said, it's not something you see in football these days. And it's kind of a, mm. a shift where the club has taken power. Yeah. We've talked about how the players have had power in dynamics before, and now the club yeah. has really... But the way they took that oh, power yeah. back was yeah. atrocious. I like, agree. I don't. I think it's kind of good to see clubs kind of get some of that power back on the trade table, but the way Collingwood did it was yeah. abhorrent. Well, um, Alex Witherden is an example of how yeah. a contracted player who has no reason to leave... That he's been tapped on the shoulder said yeah. probably best you'd look for a trade yeah. it was Jaden Stevenson Adam Trelaw basically basically that Bucks saying yeah the team doesn't like you piss yeah. off it's, it's, yeah strange I, I think this will be something that's talked about well into the future and yeah. maybe after everyone retires we'll get a little documentary on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah who knows but anyway thanks for listening guys thanks for watching stay tuned to the channel we're going to be doing content as we get closer to the draft I've had a lot of people ask about getting Lenny back on Fuck no, he was a draft pre- uh, preview Wiz, extraordinaire yeah. last year. It was a really good pod. I actually watched it yeah. the other day and I thought, gee, Lenny provided a lot of good insights. Yeah, yeah. Especially this year, I feel like, because no one would know about the WA time. We've yeah. got two of the top five picks. People talk about yes. Logan McDonald, Dan yeah. Vagranger Brass, who I've mentioned a few times so far. Yeah, he, he knows a lot about the WA kids, but in general, yeah. he's he's pretty yeah, across exactly. the board. So, um, we saw him for that. a few weeks ago out at the GOG and he said he was keen. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, cool. Sweet. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks yep. for watching. Stay tuned to True Footy. Um, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next episode. See you in the next vid. Catch up. Bam.